It's 7 o'clock in the morning, and Howie Mandel arrives at the set of Deal or No Deal. First trick of the day. Almost immediately, glimpses of the Howie Mandel that he's kept secret for most of his career. Handrails are my enemy. I never go near a handrail. I won't open those things. I would never serve myself. I wouldn't touch this because a lot of people have touched that. This is actually my, my nightmare. Mendel has obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. I love this. Every door should just push out. His obsession, germs. An obsession made famous with his trademark fist bump. And what's the difference between shaking the hand and, and the fist bump? In my mind, this is a Petri dish. Otherwise, I would spend the day as I have in the past in my life in the men's room rubbing and scrubbing and scalding. But as we were about to learn, Howie Mandel's OCD goes far beyond that fist bump. Off stage, it is all consuming. Look, everything's brand new each day. That's normally how a workstation looks. Look at my stuff. It's all brand new, not touched. Even Mandel's trademark bald head is this way by choice. This feels so streamlined and so clean. You know, it just it feels works. cleaner. Not even 8.30 in the morning, and we've barely scratched the surface. Mandel has written a new book called Here's the Deal, Don't Touch Me, revealing his at times crippling struggle with OCD. It's, it's uncomfortable, and it's, it's hard, and uh, it's somewhat embarrassing. About his mental illness. You dropped the pill. Yeah. As our camera rolls. Yeah, it's right here. He drops the one anxiety pill he would brought with him to the set. I don't want you to touch the floor, and I won't touch the floor. <laughs> I mean, now this, it's coming off like crazy. But it's, I, why? I'm not going to take it. To this day, Mandel is in therapy and on medication for the anxiety that comes with his OCD. He won't say which kind because he knows the millions of adults suffering from OCD are also looking for a cure-all. For him, this latest medication came after working with his own doctor and therapist. But you only brought one pill from the hotel? Yeah. So that means you'll go without it rather than have the one pill that you have? Right. This is precisely the kind of moment Howie Mandel kept secret for so many years. And like the 40 million American adults who suffer from anxiety disorders, Mandel's began when he was just a child. He remembers as far back as six years old. They would make fun of me because I couldn't tie my shoes. Well, I could, but I didn't want to touch it. But I don't want to say I'm afraid to touch it because it's dirty, so I didn't. The battle in his mind was constant. I had like a fight going on inside. Like I gotta wash my hands or I feel filthy or I haven't spent enough time in the shower or I, you know, there's, there's something still crawling on me. He said he was an outcast in school, his humor out of bounds. Expelled from high school, he never finished. But he would find the stage a place for his comedy and a young woman who found his brand of humor charming. 30 years later, she sits beside him as his wife and both remember the title of his first featured act. Borderline psychotic. When you look back at that marquee, how did they know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you saw the rubber glove? Yes. Thank you very much. I thought he was nuts. Like, oh my. But I thought it was hysterical. But even then, the rubber gloves were no joke, carrying them for more than his act. And you knew that at the time? We didn't know it was OCD then, but we just, I did know that he took a lot of showers. He had certain rituals that he did, but I didn't know what it was. She also didn't know it would get worse. In describing what life is like, Mandel pointed us to the movie The Aviator. Remembering the portrayal of Howard Hughes, he said there were striking similarities. At the end, he ends up naked in a room locked away, uh, urinating into a bottle. And he doesn't want to face the world. And I said, you know, there are times, and, and it's, I'm not exactly when I'm that close to that. How many times do you think have you been that close to that scene, kind of trapped in a room? There's a couple times, moments in a month, when it's just hard, when it's just hard to go out or, or, you know, face anything. A couple of times a month, paralyzed by his fears, and we wondered, how was he able to be a father? How did you raise three children? That was tough. That was tough. <laughs> the kids, when they were crawling on the floor, everything bought, it was so hard for him. And there was this, a second house built in the backyard for Mendel to escape the germs of his own family. A solitary place where only Howie Mandel would go. And it's embarrassing and it's hard, especially in front of your child. We have constantly told the kids daddy's uh, behavior in those moments is not something to be emulated. Are you able to hug, kiss, touch? Hug, kiss, do everything. It's just for whatever reason, it's the hands. It's the hands. I mean, if somebody's sick, I'll leave the room. Even the kids, if the kids are sick.
yeah, I'm not, I'm, I, well, if the kids are sick, I'll put on a mask. If my wife's sick, I won't sleep in the same room, and I don't eat in the same room. I care for them, <laughs> and I, uh, I'll be there, but I, you know, it's You'll hard. You'll be there down the hall. Down the hall. You wonder if the kids thought you were a surgeon at one point. <laughs> right. I think I was being somewhat, uh, trying to be a little bit entertaining. But they there aren't I, many dads who walk around the house with Yeah, but you know what? The, the, the truth of the matter is, whoever your dad is or whoever your family is, that's your norm.